is the author of Tooth Imprints on a Corn Dog, Et Tu Babe, and I Smell Esther Williams. These are some of my favorite book titles. His latest is The Tetherballs of Bougainville. Please welcome Mark Lehner. I was reading the book this morning. This has got a very uh, interesting plot. T tell us the plot. I can tell you very simply. Okay. I'm 13 in the book. Mm -hmm. I go to prison to watch my father executed by lethal injection. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have sex with the warden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just so. It's one of those, you know, I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, another one of those. <laughs> watch your father executed, have sex with the warden books. But... When can someone come up with a new idea? That's yeah. what I'm asking. Well, this one has tetherball. Right, right. That was my stroke of genius, I think. You added in that in form. there. And <laughs> now, you, uh, you're clearly, when you're writing these books, and maybe I have the wrong take, but you're clearly trying to, you include your parents a lot. Yeah. Are you trying to upset them a little bit? Are you trying to punish them in some ways? I'm trying to punish them, hurt them deeply. But I've yet to succeed. In this book, this was one of my greatest efforts, actually. Mm -hmm. My father, I portrayed my father as a, um, an angel dust addicted psychopathic killer. Mm -hmm. And my mother... <laughs> With a heart of gold. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother as a kind of recreational vampire who orgies with the mariachi band of the Short Hills Mall in New Jersey. Now, so the trouble is, though, and I've tried to do this with each book. I'm just ratcheting up the outrage here, but they never respond to it. They just say, oh, you're so clever. We're so proud of you, you know. <laughs> if they would only uh, rise to the occasion once, I'd stop. That's the only reason I'm doing this. You want some outrage from your parents. Yeah, it's like in The, in, in, uh, the Exorcist when Linda Blair comes down and she pees at the dinner party. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I just want to... <laughs> I want to get a reaction out of them. Right. If they'd react, I'd stop writing. I never wanted to do this. That's what my show is. This show is all about that same That's thing. Right. That's I'm here great... just trying to get my parents to say, okay, stop it, enough. But That's... no, it never happens. That's the great American artistic impulse, I think. Yeah. We've now, you, got it. You, have a, you have a young daughter. How old is your daughter? She's five now. Five years old. Do you get material from her? Is, uh, does she yeah. give you ideas? All the time. You never know when to expect it. What was recently... Um, Oh, I was going to be on the Charlie Rose show. I'm about to go out the door, and she stops me very earnestly, very serious. She says, Dad, you going to bring your penis? <laughs> so I... Did you? I said, yeah. Well, you know, since... <laughs> Begs the question. It's since I started using the detachable. I don't know if you tried that. <laughs> you know, you hate to be out, and you're... Okay, <laughs> It's very embarrassing to be caught yeah. without it, yeah. What, uh, so, so uh, what did you say? What did you do? You just... I told her I had it. First of all, on that show, you never know. You know, his questions can get sort of lengthy, so you never... You, sometimes you want to just have a little prop to take out and cut it short there. That would get Charlie Rose's attention. <laughs> He'd be in the middle of a 10-minute <laughs> question. My thinking. Yeah. Was my thinking. Uh, you're doing... What strikes me as very odd is you're doing a sitcom. Right. Because I... Reading your books, I don't see your imagination and your world fitting onto a TV show. What's this sitcom going to be like? I don't know if I'd call it a sitcom. I think it, it, I'd call it... It's called Iggy Vile MD. Uh, and we've done a pilot for MTV. Mm -hmm. um, I call it a medical action comedy. That's nice. It's a new genre. Right. It's right. like... Here's... I'd say it's like Marcus Welby with prodigious alcohol consumption slutty nurses and cannibalism it's kind of that if you could work that all into the title then you get <laughs> then you get people watching it but it's very funny but it's a comedy it's a, too it's a comedy do you find that that helps these days if you add it's a comedy that's that's you know you have to when you're pitching things out in hollywood there's there are two things that work you have to say something i don't care what you're pitching you can say this is a story about uh, triplets and, I don't know, their mother did a lot of mercury in high school or something, and they're born, no legs, no arms or something, and the network executive said, is it a comedy? Can, can we make that funny? And you always agree with network people. You say, yeah, well, we can make that funny, you know. <laughs> the other thing I've found that works is if you suggest some kind of radical size transformation. 
No matter, any kind of character, you can say, I want to do a thing about ballroom dancing Hasidic rabbi or something, and you, you see they're not responding to it. Just say, well, we'll make them small like those little people in Mothra, you know? And, we'll, <laughs> just, and they'll say, yeah, yeah, I like, if now I like tiny, it. Now they I like it. it. Right. That's a good idea. Them down. It works. So if this show ever got into ratings we'll trouble or anything... shrink Iggy Vile down. Shrink, oh, okay. Right, make yeah. it a little. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good idea. Thank you. Now, uh, when is this... Uh, have they tested it yet? Because that's the big thing with these shows. They no. haven't tested them. No, they haven't tested it. Um, that's a wonderful thing, testing. That whole process. Right. Wonderful. They take shows and they test them with a group of people to decide whether they'll yeah. make it or not. Yeah, so... It, I mean, it's a terrific thing to have maybe a year or two years worth of your life's work judged by a bunch of... Um, glue-sniffing, acne-ravaged adolescents in the San Fernando Valley. You know, that's how, that's how art should be made. I... Well, why are you trying to make art on TV in the first place? Because I'm a stupid. <laughs> television, my friend. Uh, the book is The, uh, the Tetherballs of uh, Bougainville yeah. by uh, Mark Lehner and, uh, of course, your other books out there as well. Check them out. They're, uh, they're a lot of fun. Mark, thank you very much thank for being you. here. Mark Lehner, everybody, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. I do want to thank all my guests, Mark Lehner. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank Very you. funny. It's a pleasure. Best of luck with the book. Our thanks to Jerry Ryan for being here. And of course, our thanks to Stephen Baldwin and his yellow hat for making it on the show. You got your Andy Richter. Feel better, Andy. Max Weinberg and the Max Weinberg Seven. Good night, everybody. Stay tuned for later. Mm -hmm. surprised about the news? Well, no, we all knew, and I can tell you one thing, whoever is his boyfriend right now, lucky man. Real lucky. Thank you very much. Lucky, lucky man. Huge. <laughs> a great looking one, too. Lots of <laughs> that big. They don't look so good. But his. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Use. 